Alright friends, so here we are in the last year of the war. Thanks for coming this far with us. If you're a first time viewer, I invite you to please subscribe, help our channel grow. I recently looked at my analytics and I found out that 81% of the views are from unsubscribed viewers. So that tells me a lot of people keep coming back anyway, so why not just subscribe? You know, just why not? I have daily content and would love to have our community grow more, along with a Patreon. I am possibly going to be, along with the Patreon, I'm possibly going to be opening a channel Discord and hopefully getting some collabs with other channels. If you're returning, please, as always, like, share, and comment, and let's get into it today. So our last video is on Grant, but this video will be picking up after the video before, with Grant joining Meade at Brandy Station in March of 1864. With the fall of Vicksburg and the pacification of the West, the Anaconda Plan now begins to constrict itself on the south. Up the east coast, small pockets of federal troops have landed and were seizing coastal positions. Meanwhile, Grant Green lit William Tecumseh Sherman's march to Atlanta and Savannah. Now, the only thing left was Robert E. Lee. So Grant with me devised their new campaign. They will take Richmond. There is no if, ends, or buts. They will not stop this time, no prisoner exchanges, no more winter quarters. They will fight and bring a different kind of war to bear on the Army of Northern Virginia. He will do everything in his power to put the Army of the Potomac between Lee and Richmond, doing the same tactic his own friend James Longstreet suggested to Robert E. Lee during the Gettysburg Campaign. So on May 4th, the Army of the Potomac crossed the Rapidan River. Governor Warren, now in command of the 5th Corps, settled around Wilderness Tavern, with Hancock and his 2nd Corps to his northeast, and Sedgwick and the 6th Corps coming down from the Rapidan. Ewell and Hill would engage the 3 Corps in what would become known as the Battle of the Wilderness from May 5th to 7th. This will be the third time the two armies clashed over the same ground. Union forces on the 7th began to pull out, Grant's chief of staff, Henry Halleck, tried to encourage Grant to withdraw, even trying to have Meade agree, giving scenarios that Lee could defeat them. Grant simply responded, I am tired of hearing what Robert E. Lee will do to us. I want to start to hear what we'll do to him. So instead of withdrawing north, Grant directed Meade to move south. The army began chanting south, jubilantly as they moved around the Army of Northern Virginia. The armies would engage throughout Northern Virginia at Spotsylvania Courthouse, where General Sedgwick would actually be killed, Tato Paramani, Wilson's Wharf, and North Anna. At the Battle of Yellow Tavern on May 11th, 1864, the eyes of the Army of Northern Virginia, Jeb Stuart, died battling Phil Sheridan and the cavalry of the Union Army. On May 31st of 1864, however, a sickly Lee ordered the Army of Northern Virginia to halt near a tavern called Cold Harbor Tavern. The Confederates began to dig in. Lee had been suffering from dysentery, so he couldn't continue on the march. Grant and Meade, with five corps ready, thought they could finally finish off the dying army. But people like Winfield Scott Hancock suggested they do reconnaissance before assaulting. The two would ignore the suggestion and the pleas. From the 1st to 3rd, they would throw corps after corps at the Confederate positions. Thousands would die. Grant, Meade, and even Abraham Lincoln would all say their greatest regret was Cold Harbor. Confederate casualties were estimated around 30,000. Union casualties were over 50,000. Many of the wounded would succumb to their wounds. Over 7,000 Union soldiers will die at the battle itself. Again, Lee would think defeated, Grant would withdraw, as the others have. Instead, he moved his army south of the James River, threatening Richmond and targeting the railroad hub at Petersburg, Virginia. Now, this is where the Overland Campaign ends. The Siege of Petersburg will begin June 9th, 1864. Lee will turn the city into a giant fortification. Grant will summon the Army of the James to join the Army of the Potomac and surround Lee. 
The horrors of World War I would be first seen here, with the violent trench warfare. Even the introduction of Gatling guns, which would lay waste to whole regiments. PGT Beauregard even brought his Southern Virginian and North Carolina troops to aid Lee. Meade made his first assaults on June 15th to the 18th before Lee could concentrate his forces. At the time, Beauregard was the only one in position, and he would hold back all five corps attacks on his position. At the Battle of Jerusalem Plank Road, June 21st to 23rd, the 2nd and 6th Corps would engage with Hill. Again, no land would be taken or lost, but Union forces would begin to tear the railroad out and render Petersburg useless. Smaller actions would, conti would continue to take place until 9th Corps Commander Ambrose Burnside would create a tactic to blow the Confederate lines and then seize their position. Burnside established the U.S. Colored Regiments to lead the assault. They would spend weeks training on the attack and how to hold their ground until reinforcements could arrive. A few days before the attack, though, Meade would actually ask the units to be changed for optics. Grant would agree, thinking, how would the public react if the attack fails and the colored troops were the ones leading the assault? However, this would cause the opposite effect to happen. On July 30th, 1864, men of the 9th Corps lit the fuse to barrels placed under the Confederate lines. At 4.44 a.m., an explosion rocked the battlefield as 8,500 men charged towards the opening. However, the regular regiments had not received the training the colored regiments did. So instead of charging around the perimeter, they went directly into the crater. The Battle of the Crater became a nightmare. The Union troops themselves had actually become trapped. Then Confederates got back up and Lee even moved more reserves in to help the exposed position. The U.S. colored troops would be brutalized and the 9th Corps would suffer 50% casualties. The attack became a Confederate victory. Burnside, once again, was crushed. Petersburg would continue for eight more months. Lee, after fa facing mounting casualties and desertions, would make a withdrawal. The Confederate government would flee. Jefferson Davis would move the executive offices to Danville, Virginia. Meanwhile, Lee and the remnants of the Army of Northern Virginia and Beauregard's troops made a break west in hopes to link up with General Joseph Johnson and his Army of Tennessee. But Grant would not permit this. They would not lighten up on Lee, fighting him at any chance they could. This will begin the Appomattox Campaign which would be a little over two weeks long. Grant ordered the Army of the Shenandoah to join the Army of the Potomac and James, a force now numbering a little over 114,000 men. Against the Army of Northern Virginia and its remaining 56,000 men, for the first time, small skirmishes, for the time, small skirmishes continued, but Phil Sheridan and the Army of the Shenandoah had been constantly on Lee's tail. After a small action early on April 9th, Lee knew it was over. His army prepared for one last fight against all three armies, but Lee was done. A member of Longstreet's staff put a white dish towel on a pole and rode to the Union lines. At 8 o'clock a.m., Lee rode to the designated location, the home of Wilmer McLean at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. Wilmer McLean is, in fact, lived near Manassas originally and had left in Manassas after the first battle of Manassas to escape the war. And now, in the parlor of his new house, the war will end. A bit of irony. Lee will arrive first, surrounded by thousands of Union soldiers, only with his aide, Colonel William Taylor, and flag bearer. Grant would arrive with Sheridan and members of both their staffs, Meade was actually moving with elements of the army at the time, and the only reason Sheridan was there was because Grant had been inspecting Sheridan's command when he received word of the surrender. Meade and Lee would meet on April 10th, the next day, after Lee had finally addressed, given his final address to his army. He would happen upon me and say, My God, Meade, you have some gray in your beard. Meade would simply respond, That must be an account of you, sir. 
On April 12th, the Army of Northern Virginia officially would surrender. Its arms and colors to the Army of the, the Potomac. Commanded by the hero of the Round Tops, the newly Brigadier General Joshua Chamberlain, after almost four years to the day, the war was done as the Confederates stacked their rifles and abandoned their colors. Marching back to their homes, the Army of the Potomac had been through hell and back and were now victorious. Unfortunately, they would not be, never be able to parade for their president as two days later, Lincoln will be assassinated at Ford's Theater. A month later, they would take part in the grand review of the armies on May 23rd. George Meade at the head led his 80,000 men down Pennsylvania Avenue, saluting Grant and the new president, Andrew Johnson. His force would be followed by Sherman and the Army of the Tennessee. This day would actually be the origin of the Memorial Day holiday that is celebrated in the United States of America today. The Army of the Potomac would finally be, dis be disbanded on June 28, 1865, many units redistributed to the new military districts. But it was also the men of the Army of the Potomac who in 1866 would found the Grand Army of the Republic, a veterans organization that precursed the VA, that men would help and take care of one another, as they did during the war. The Army of the Potomac was pivotal in the American Civil War. They had become what we remember as the Union Army, the men who held the high grounds at Gettysburg. They charged the trenches at Cold Harbor and accepted the surrender at Appomattox. Thank you so much for watching. We will begin our episode on the Corps next, and then our series on the Army of Northern Virginia. And then we are done. Again, if you're a new viewer, I would love if we could earn your subscription today. There's a little red subscription button there. Would love if you could press it. Also, for everyone else, please like, share, and comment, and we'll see you in the next one.